This is my first ever home, and it's here in beautiful Bali, Indonesia. This home has been with me through many chapters of life, and to be honest, it's starting to show. So over the last few months, I've given it a few facelifts, and today I'm going to give you a little show around my Bali HQ. But first, let's go back to where it all started a few years ago. I just bought my first ever home here in Bali, and I want to show you guys around. It's not quite ready, but here we go. Open the front door. Now, as you guys can see, things are not quite moving quality. I mean, there's first of all, dust everywhere. There's drywall. There's things that aren't being kept that are currently here. The reason is because we're changing out a lot of the furniture pieces that were currently here for display reasons. And um, I'm really excited to show you guys what the final result looks like in a couple weeks. Firstly, I just wanna show you what the upstairs situation is like because they've told us that we're moving in in two weeks. And I have to say, I'm a little bit concerned because it doesn't look like we'll be ready to move in in two weeks. This whole place is perfect for me. It's quite uncommon in Bali to find things that are indoor living style first. And this place is almost entirely indoor living aside from this small little pool area and very modern I've loved my home for the last two years it's a beautiful space especially during the day you get a reasonable amount of sunlight but the problem spots are right here you get a lot of dark spots where there's sadly no windows as somebody who loves daylight loves bright spaces this is a temporary solution that actually makes a huge difference making it feel like there's a window over there but one of the other things that we wanted to do is we wanted to have more of a greenery feeling we wanted the feeling of bali inside of indoor living and so today we are doing some serious renovations right here well not renovations but installations Now, some years have passed by and parts of the home did not age well, but by far the worst of them were the kitchen countertops. No matter how much we scrubbed and washed it away, it stayed brown, it started to chip, and it lost its beautiful white and bright touch. Every square foot of this countertop now has at least a dozen scratches. They don't really pick up so well in the video, but in person, you can see this space is looking a little used. That brings me to where we're at now where not only are the countertops about to be ripped out, but the entire backsplash area, basically these little hexagonal honeycomb style tiles are also going with it. I think this is really valuable because it's going to quickly fall off. I've been looking a lot at different countertop alternatives for the Lost Villa, which is going to be a very, very premium villa. And back in the day, I would have imagined a granite, a marble, a natural stone would have been the most premium option. But the truth is, even marble, even granite, they're prone to showing marks of moisture they get scratched and they can even get cracked so in the last few years there's been some pretty cool technology that's actually created synthetic stone essentially all of the natural minerals are taken grinded and then compacted with like a mega press I have just placed my order it definitely wasn't cheap but all of these countertops here in the kitchen are going to be replaced with deck tin the style is going to be far less glossy than this but it's going to look like a natural marble the suitcases are literally packed I'm just about to head to the airport and and in theory, when I come back from my Christmas break, maybe the countertops will be here. Maybe they won't, I don't know. If this is your personal home or even a property that you plan to rent out, I know it's gonna cost you a little bit more, but I definitely would steer you away from doing plastic countertops because in the end, it's gonna take three to four days of this entire space being out of commission. If you're a rental business, that's a lot of money you're losing out on. Additionally, these counters only lasted us really two to three years. Once you start replacing that a few times, you're going to get to a very similar price and maybe even more money than it would have cost if you had gone for the more premium finishings on the tabletop surfaces. I think that applies to a lot of different parts of your home. All right, let's go ahead and switch these out. Today is the day. This living room is becoming just slightly more chaotic than usual. We are going to have everything stripped away. Goodbye countertop. This is coming out so they can remove the tiles. Everything in the kitchen needs to be moved aside because for the next five days, this is going to be a big construction site. And the most beautiful and new addition to the home, we got an Eagle One, which is like the dream coffee machine. But I honestly don't know how to use it yet. I have a training session next week. So for now, we're gonna move her out over there somewhere. You know you're basically a dad when you're excited about kitchen renovations. Febby likes to cook here too, so this is a big deal. Yep. And this is 
Haris, our fearless leader. So it's his job to basically get this place stripped down before the Decton arrives, and then from there there's gonna be like a Decton authorized installer that will take a couple days to put in all the new countertops and backsplash. Very excited. And it has finally begun, guys. The kitchen is stripped down to the bare basics. We have removed all of the things. I haven't seen this area look so clean since the day I moved in, but yeah, we've moved all of our appliances out of the way. They're going to start off by Removing these plastic countertops, uh, thank God. Again, guys, if there's one piece of advice you can take away from this as a contractor, as somebody about to start a renovation project, it's do not buy plastic countertops. They'll look good for six months, you'll regret it later. I'm excited, we are finally getting our counters on. We're finally gonna have a kitchen that can do all the work that we do, because we're currently working on two burners, which is like really hard to do. That's true. And this place was more set up for, I'd say, short-term, medium-term rentals. It wasn't fully designed for someone to live here full-time, in the kitchen at least. You know, the main thing was there was no ceiling hood. Every time Ruby would make bacon, I could smell bacon in my bedroom. There was smoke that would get stuck in here. Again, there was some cost-cutting that was going on. They're making a ventilation pipe that won't be seen. It'll go through the roof and all the way to the outside. We're replacing this with a four head burner. So that way Ruby can really cook multiple things at once. And they're also redoing a little bit of the electrical to install new outlets so that we can have appliances a little bit more spread out across the counter. They're destroying the home, what are they doing? <laughs> it is time guys, the grand reveal of my new kitchen. So we're going for more of a minimalistic finish. Uh, you can see here, What's cool about it is you can play tic-tac-toe. You can do some math equations on your table. Straying away from the mainstream, but I've always liked to be a bit of an individual. This is uh, all part of the look. It's time to send away this to the landfill where it should have been in the first place. I didn't think it was gonna be this dusty. It really has become a construction site in here. This is quite the job. I gotta say, these plastic countertops may not hold up very well, but they sure are hard to remove. Wow, the dream team. All right, I am very excited. Two things have just happened. We have completely gutted the place of all the old counters. Entire tile has been removed. But the most exciting part is the fact that everything we ordered has just arrived. Let me show you what our new countertop surfaces are gonna look like. The same surface we use here on the table is also going to be the backsplash, this area here. This is Decton. This is Decton. Wow. The cool thing is, you don't actually technically need a cutting board anymore. You can actually cut directly on this. No way. And it won't scratch. Are you really yeah. serious? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's like life changing. It doesn't stain. You don't it's understand. It's flame resistant. You can put down a hot pot and it won't do a thing. Really? Yeah. Wow. Marble is minerals that have been compressed under the Earth's pressure for thousands of years. What they do is they take those same minerals that make up natural marbles, they bring it to like a giga press somewhere in Spain, they flatten it with tens if not hundreds of thousands of pounds of pressure until you get this. And so this is essentially synthetic marble. It's actually more expensive, it's more premium, but it's because it's actually, if I'm not mistaken, twice the hardness. It's, it's a lot stronger and that's why you can do things like cutting on it and not scratch a single bit so pretty cool please don't do that anyways I'm still these are my babies <laughs> we'll get a cutting board but you know in theory you could so all the pieces have arrived and want to see something that I'm really excited about yeah go see what's in the box what's in the box oh it's a sink mm -hmm. wow it's way way bigger than the one we have that's awesome. Isn't it? Wow, that's such a big sink. There wasn't many or any brands <laughs> that made a nice oh kind my. of metallic finish. So this is a very premium company. Uh, it's actually a German one. It's called Gro. Gro, 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 Grohe? Gro? I have no idea. It wasn't cheap. There wasn't many or any brands that made a nice oh kind my. of metallic finish in black that was uh, going to fit the space. You're getting like at least an extra 25 in width. This is gonna make such a difference. Like now you can actually have two sets of plates side by side. We're gonna do the understyle. So the Decton is going to sit on top of this. So you won't see this giant rim of black. It's gonna be hidden underneath. With this beautiful sink, with these beautiful countertops, we still need to find ourselves a nice faucet. We're figuring that out. We're looking at a few brands right now, so I'll keep you posted. We won't be here quite at the same time as we get this installed. There's some cool ones on the market right now that are touchless. You basically put your hand to it and the faucet turns on, which I think would be really cool. Ruby, you excited about that? I am super Imagine super that, excited. you're just like, oh, my hands are full. 
But that actually is so helpful. Does that mean we're making more outlets? And we're getting more outlets. Are we? Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's like Christmas. And, <laughs> and, and we're reconfiguring the uh, electrical. So one thing that's quite typical of let's say your average developer's home is they're gonna get things to work but they're not gonna perfect it. They're not gonna make it quite right. So when you move in, you start to see all these problems. Well, our electrical system, think of it as having like six different ways to channel the electricity. If you've ever had the experience where you go, you hear that pop and all of a sudden all your power goes off, it's because you've overloaded your grid. What you're supposed to do is, you're supposed to split areas like the kitchen where there's a lot of electricity in use and you're supposed to put it across several channels of your home's power grid. That's my best attempt at explaining it. These guys put everything on the same channel and that has caused constant frustrations. We literally, Ruby, where do you put the air fryer? <laughs> we put it right next to the Wi-Fi router. Yeah, the air fryer. On that power grid. <laughs> yeah. It's so actually the, kind of ridiculous. The air fryer literally goes here, and that's the only way we can continue to use like the stove or the oven, the electrical one, uh, without overloading the grid. So, anyways, these are exciting things for us. Uh, most of all, exciting things for Ruby because she cooks a lot. We're getting some new outlets installed right here, which is going to be nice because it can help us a little bit we can do a bit of decluttering. Not all of the appliances will need to be next to each other. We're also going to reconfigure our shelving beneath, try to get a few of the appliances in convenient places and off the counter so we can have more space. That's kind of like stage one or two. And on top of all of that, we've placed an order for a hood, which as Ruby can attest to, that's probably going to be the biggest game changer of all of this. Literally, the house won't smell like bacon anymore or coat as food. It literally just like goes all the way upstairs and we don't even have windows upstairs. So it smells like bacon problem. in our room all the time. Yeah, all the is time. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> yes, it is because I want our house to smell like lemongrass and mint, not bacon. Mm. I think that it's probably the best case scenario that I went through all of this. I don't say this like it's been some horror or some nightmare. The last developer cut corners, lots of them. As somebody that wants to develop, I would rather charge a premium and do things right rather than have somebody move in and then realize two years into it that they have to get everything done themselves and they have to pay more. Because of that, the things I build will always have a bit of a premium to them, but I'd rather be the guy selling the product that people move into and feel excited about, it lasts them, things are built for the long term, then the guy that sold a seemingly cheaper investment, but then basically handed them off a bunch of problems. This whole experience has been very positive. I'm glad I had it. All right, I just wrapped up my workout. It is week number four of going six days a week. I've come home to the progression of our construction site. Let me show you around. Make our way downstairs. That room is probably our next renovation victim. But for today, all hands on this deck. And speaking of decks, the Decton installation team has arrived. Yes, <laughs> I write my own scripts, everyone. We have removed the sink today. And by we, I mean they did it. I was also startled to see a massive cockroach and a bunch of its babies underneath. Probably gonna need to take care of that. So it sounds like we might have some delays. Uh, I bought a sink that might be a little bit too big for this frame. They're gonna find a way but it might mean uh, we gotta change some things around here. So for one, this all needs to be replaced on the top surface. So I'm kinda hanging around, trying to be a team player here, trying to learn a little bit while I'm at it. I think I just had my first proud contractor moment. Here's the problem. The sink can fit. We'll cut the plywood. What I didn't calculate though is the faucet or the tap that's gonna fit behind it. This basically meant we'd have to cut into this. The problem is, it's right there. We can't cut into it. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hole in the backside of the island. So the contractor was saying that what we could look into doing is basically creating a doubled plywood so that it has more room to cut into. This would mean more cost, more time, bit of a setback. But here's the thing, this is a very thick rim sink. So I kind of shyly asked if we could just cut a hole in the sink's rim. Surely enough, that's what we're gonna do now. So that's gonna save us a whole day and uh, also a bit of money. All right, start in the morning, breakfast is delivered, another day of renovations. Got myself some protein-filled oatmeal, a protein smoothie, and the team has arrived. One of the exciting updates to the kitchen is this piece of kit right here. This is our new burner. As you guys can see, we have our first tabletops installed. It looks so good, like 
unbelievable. It definitely has a very natural finish. Another big part of this is that that burner is actually hopefully able to be installed underneath the Decton. In theory, we're trying to make it look like this, where you only see the heads of the burners, but the entire black panel sits beneath hardtop surface. We'll see if they can do it. They're not 100%, we'll see. Bit of a setback. Now they're covering adhesives all over the back end and they're just gonna lift it up against the wall and it should work. It is day four, guys. Things are taking a little bit longer than we expected. I guess uh, that's kind of the way things are to be expected here in the construction world. With that, things are looking amazing. Let me give you a little quick show. We got countertops in. Mostly everything is now set up. But the most exciting part is this. And this, I had to jump through some hoops and hurdles. Yes. That literally set us back a couple of days. We needed to have somebody, a specialist, come in, basically take apart an entire brand new stove top. And the company that sold us it refused to do it. It was against their, uh, their terms of service. I basically completely scrubbed my guarantee or my warranty on it, but that's fine. For me, the function and, and the look of this design is so cool. This is the priority. So now you don't have that kind of typical stove cutout look. And I have to say, I thought these guys would just come in here, drop these slabs, and be gone, but it's a lot of work to shape, to cut out all the outlets. Uh, the outlets are there, some new ones just installed. Sink is being put back in today. Six months later, and welcome to the kitchen. You can see here the way the Decton has all come together. We've got our new sink in place our faucet. We got these from like Zara Home. They actually perfectly match. This right here is probably the best part of the entire countertop setup. We managed to get the stove inserted behind it and it looks flawless. I'm actually gonna be doing the exact same thing with the exact same stove in Las Villa. Because the cool thing is, this is only about $400 for the stove instead of dropping thousands of dollars on a very high-end brand. When at the end of the day, you're basically hiding all the branding underneath your beautiful final materials. But, while well, you've already seen the countertops and you've seen how they've come together so beautifully, one thing you haven't seen is this. This is the Ferrari for baristas. And this right here? She's a bougie barista. She's become a bougie barista. The other day, one of my friends came over and he used to be a barista. And when he saw this, he was like, whoa, you have an Eagle One. And honestly, it was a bit of a proud moment because I love a good coffee. The problem was, it wasn't as simple as my old machine. You see, I had an espresso where I basically used to put a pot in, press a button, and coffee was ready. It wasn't great coffee, but it was quick and convenient. But this one, you actually have to learn how to use. Victoria Arduino, the brand that makes these, actually sent a trainer over to show us how to use it. And that's when Ruby and I became baristas. Or and really just me. Yeah, just me. <laughs> Only one thing to do. Nailed it. The machine is amazing, but it's also about the ingredients. And so Ruby's been basically tapping into Bali's best. We have this for a little bit of sweetness when we're making a specialty drink. So it's actually coconut syrup, all 100% natural. What else have we been using? Uh, dulce de leche, brown sugar, honey, mm -hmm. palm tree sap. There are so many things that you mm -hmm. can use to make coffee taste delicious. And kind of weird, but we've been getting raw milk. Yes, raw cow milk is the best cow milk to use because it makes it extra foamy. It creeped me out at first, but I kind of like it. The only problem is it expires in two days. So you got ingredients, you got a talented barista, but the thing that makes this the Ferrari of espresso machines is the fact that it packs so much pressure inside of it. If you pick this thing up, it's probably like 40 kilos it is so heavy it has so much pressure that you get every single ounce of flavor from your coffee bean so when it pushes out espresso it's like this beautiful golden color something that you just never got on my other coffee machines before the end result is just amazing 
So the next on the renovation list is the garden that you saw renovated at the start. We basically put a massive jungle wall in here, but then we went traveling. And unfortunately during this time, our gardener also decided to take some time off. And when we came back, everything had perished. Basically all the plants outside of my office, all the plants in our backyard that used to cover this white concrete wall have basically withered and died. But the good news is this renovation is a rather simple fix and someone has just arrived who I'm hoping knows what to do. So this is the guy that is building the entire jungle around Lost Villa. At first I was like, do I call Anton for a little pocket sized garden here? But he's like, no, no, I'll come. And here he is. So what are we gonna do, Anton? We got a bit of an issue. Today we're looking at new planter boxes or refilling old planter boxes at the back area behind the pool. In the lower area, I want a lush green leafy jungle. In the more sunny corner, a frangipani and a bright pink, a lipstick pink um, bougainvillea. We're gonna basically add on to what we have here and really let this jungle wall grow back in. But these are the survivors, everything else kaput. And one afternoon later, we have our jungle back. The fifth one yet. Let's not let this one die. Now there's one last part of this home that I wanna show you guys that has definitely had a lot of love and attention put into it. Simply put, this is where I live. Welcome to my office. This room right here is where all the magic happens. And I've got a lot of equipment in here, a lot of things that have streamlined my life, my workflow. I'd be happy to give you guys a full office tour if you ever wanna see it. Just let me know in the comments. But I gotta say, after years of being on the road, working from coffee shops, working from wherever I could find Wi-Fi, there's simply nothing that beats this. The moment you come in, you connect to the internet, and things just kinda happen. This is my sanctuary of productivity and my favorite part of the home. I hope you guys enjoyed. A little BTS to the Lost Headquarters, at least one of them. Our other home is in Dubai and we love that place. There's actually a full video tour on that spot too. If you wanna see, it's just linked down below. And I think what I love so much about this life that I've built for myself and Ruby and I is that we have so much contrast. When we wanna be in the tropics, we come to Bali. When we wanna be in the city, we go to Dubai. The two places have opposite weather patterns. So when it's hot and humid here, it's actually beautiful and cool in Dubai. And when Dubai is a score desert, that's when Bali's at its best. I'm so grateful for the life I've built for myself as a digital nomad. And if you're a digital nomad or a creator and you wanna learn how to take things to that next level, I'd love to show you how a family of 5,000 creators came together to build their dream lives. That is all linked down below. Would love to see you in Lost Creator Academy. And uh, that's been our humble home tour. Bye. No. We, got, we got new bed <laughs> Do we show them the bed sheets? Oh my God, yes. I convinced Christian to go with my pink sheets. So this is what we have now. I convinced him to go with pink sheets. So now we have bamboo organic eco non-toxic sheets. And they're so soft. I'm in love. We literally never leave our bed now.